You know how to compress music? Yeah. You're just like everybody else that says they know how to compress. Beep, beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Semerald, and today I'm here to explain to you guys a trick that I learned from one of my mentors that literally changed my compression game forever. My comp you can kind of think of it as the person that just found Jesus or found the, you know, the Holy Grail. This was the Holy Grail for me for when it came to learning how to program a compressor and using it properly. Before that, I was just like everybody else, literally saying that I knew what compression was and how to compress, and I would put compressors on not knowing what the hell they were doing. But this trick changed that for me because once I did this little trick, guys, it changes forever now this trick also works for reverb delay and anything that you need to program that is an audio effect where you want to hear the effect itself and then shape it to what you want it to do now compression in its simplest form guys is literally going to be volume automation that's what the compressor is doing it's like moving this up and down every time the sound gets too loud and the way we set the settings on the compressor is going to be how we turn the knob up and down aka increase volume or decrease the volume depending on what the sound is doing all right guys so the first example is going to be the kick and this is where we can really fine-tune compression in terms of using it to shape dynamically or get the kick to sound a way we want or make the transient of the kick pop through remember this little trip I'm showing you is gonna help you kind of understand what you're actually doing with the compressor so we're gonna be using the Ableton one which is very simple let's make sure you can see it and pretty much what we're gonna do again lower threshold High ratio if you want, low attack, low release, and then just take off the makeup gain. A beginner mistake I see a lot is that everyone leaves it on. So the problem with that is that if you're compressing, let's say you lower the threshold here, but the audio isn't loud enough to, to trigger the compressor, the makeup gain will still be boosting. That's the one thing I hate about it. So we're going to turn that off. And as you can see, we can't hear anything as of now. Now, with the attack, as we put it up, what you, I want you guys to look out for is that click, which is the transient of the kick drum, which is that little kind of knock to it. So here you have to decide, do we want to tame that or do we want to accentuate it? Now, if you want to tame it, ascent, you know, then you're going to have to have a low attack setting because you're trying to lower the volume on it. But if you're trying to make it kind of be a little bit more punchier, have a little bit more click to it, then you would go with a higher attack notice that we start to hear this click and the more we go up the more of the kick you're going to start to hear when you're compressing that is what we're letting through with the attack setting so a lot of people tell you the attack is how fast the compressor um, is going to really you know activate well that this is why we would want to have a high attack to preserve transients to preserve that part of the kick with it down we're, we're lowering the hell out of the volume of the transient and it, it, there's a place for it You know, you might have some kicks where it's just too too clicky But then there might be times where you want it to click a little bit more. So with this we can go Set it around there now a good key of mine with the release if you're gonna be doing this is that you want the gain reduction to go back to zero so the release will be set at a value where you allow the compression to return back to a gain reduction of zero aka no volume reduced Around there should be good. And now we just ease up the ratio. Let it out a bit through. Set it nicely where you want it. Now with it off. With it on. With it off. With it on. So you can go with either one, whichever kick you like. But as you can see, we're just accentuating it a bit more and making the center of attention on the kick beat in the beginning of it. Now, if we do something which is super cool, and we're going to move this guy down here, and we freeze this, and um, oh, it's not going to let me. We're just going to record it, I guess. So let's just record the kick now. You can see the difference that it has. First off, the first kick, you can see it just remains very loud, and then at the end, it kind of dozes off. With the new kick that we have compressed, you can see that we have this kind of downward shift on it. And, you know, the cool thing about that is that we have this kind of accentuated and this kind of reduced thanks to the release of the kick. So, very simple there, as you guys can see, a very simple change. Now, if we hear between both at the same volume, you're going to notice the difference. This one has more of that thumb, more bah. And this one is going to be more like bah. 
So necessarily here, what you can kind of conclude from this is that compression will help in shaping a sound a certain way. And that's generally what it's really doing. It's controlling the dynamic of a sound. Now, if we hear the kick in the mix compared to the old one, we can kind of see which one would be better for us. So let's hear the first one, which is the, the new kick. Now, the old kick. So they all sound very, you know, they sound, they, they're going to have each their kind of vibe. So if you want more of that dumpy kick, obviously you would go with the first one, which is the original source. Or if you want more of that transient, we can do that with the kick now. Now, another place that we can do this trick is going to be on drums. And I'll use a different compressor to show you guys that this trick works for almost everything. So my favorite drum compressor at the moment is going to be the Vertigo VSC2, which is going to be from Plugin Alliance. Um, and it's very easy to use. Again, we're going to lower back the threshold all the way. And we're going to set all the settings all the way down. And there we are. Now, the first thing we need to decide is the attack. How much do we want to let through? I kind of like the sound of this one. It feels like it's pumping a little bit more. Now, set the release set. Set the ratio. And it's all being done by ear. There we go. And then maybe just a little bit of makeup gain. Now over here without. What I want you to pay attention to is going to be on, on your right ear, you're going to hear the shaker. Now, on more of those kind of hi hatty open hatty kind of sounds, you're definitely going to hear the compression. It kind of pushes it a little bit more up, gives it a little bit of excitement, as you're going to feel. So just pay attention to that. That's the key thing there. With it on. I'll be able to do it a bit more. You can kind of see how all the drums change in conjunction, but very simple. We can use this to kind of get our drums to sound the way we want it to. Now, when you hear it in the mix and you turn it on and off, as you can see, the clap sounds a little bit more like it belongs with the drums. It's kind of dynamically the same as the drums because of the compression. So when you do compression, you don't want to hear crazy changes at times when you're trying to just mix something, make it a little bit more dynamically pleasing. Um, but those are just some tips. Now, let's go and use it on some some leads, some some drums, some saxophones. So in this song, we do have a sax and we're going to apply it on there. So here we have a saxophone. So we're going to be using a compressor on it. Now, the saxophone sounds great to me. I don't know why I would want to compress it. Maybe add a bit of OTT to make it sound a little bit more brighter, which is the EDM thing right now is to use that. So we could go with an OTT compressor, but this is another video that I've made already. So you can guys can, can kind of check that out. But what if we want to do just standard compression to it? Well, this is where you have to kind of go like, what am I trying to achieve with it? Am I trying to tame the sound dynamically? Am I trying to lower the dynamic range? Am I trying to make this reverb pop out more if I put it in front of the compressor or behind it? So in front, I'm not going to make it pop out. 
but behind I will. So it's up to you to kind of decide what you want to do. But once you have it, then you can kind of start going. So same thing when you're kind of working on it. If you want to conserve the transient on the saxophone, which it doesn't have any transient in all honesty. So I'm going to go around there and now the release. Now, with the release settings here, you really don't want to follow the rule of it has to go back to a zero of gain reduction. Uh, you can kind of go based on what you feel you want for the sound. But usually a longer release will give the sound a longer sustain and a smaller release will make it pump more. So keep that in mind. Now notice what happens, and it's something that you have to close your eyes for. When we have the compressor on after we've set it. Now I'm going to turn it off, and I hope you have your eyes closed. On. Now if I put the reverb in front, we lose that nice reverb touch. But it still sounds cool. Now, the key thing you got to notice in the saxophone is that when the sound moves, it, the, the one when it compressors on, you kind of hear the volume going up and down slightly. Now, when I turn it off, it just sounds da da da. There's no change in volume going on there. So it's up to you to decide if you need that for your track. So if we hear it right now in the What sounds better to you, this or this? So you can see compression helps sometimes in getting things to sit a little bit better on the mix. So with reverb now on here and OTT. And finally guys, one last thing before I end the video is that I know this tip is not gonna be for everybody. It might work for some people and it might not work for some people. The key thing here is, is that you're gonna be learning from a lot of people if you're learning on the internet. I know that for a fact. So your job is to find things that you like. Like, wow, I really like the way this guy taught this. I'm gonna do it that way. And then I really like the way this guy taught this and I'm gonna use his way. And as you start learning these tips and as they start helping you, you're gonna start to form a way of you mixing and mastering, making music, which will eventually become what you would consider your sound so I hope you find this tip useful let me know in the comments below if you already knew about this tip because I know there's a lot of you guys out there that do it this way and with that being said and just if you haven't subscribed subscribe and I'll see you guys next time you guys take care and you guys have an amazing day <laughs>